We're strongly opposed to the legalization of drugs. It will not happen under our government. Our conservative government will continue to work to stop kids from smoking marijuana. Canada right now has the number one rate of teen underage use of marijuana in the world. I think if you also ask Canadians, uh, do you want your children to be able to go down the street and buy, buy uh, weed from the corner store? I think almost 100% of them would say no. If we control and regulate it the way one controls and regulates alcohol, for example, uh, it actually becomes more difficult for underage people to get it. The Conservatives aren't prepared to have uh, a rational, logical discussion. The current regime has failed. Public support for cannabis law reform is at an all-time high in Canada, and all but one of the country's main political parties support legalization or decriminalization. Furthermore, the Canadian medical cannabis industry continues to expand, and the economic benefits are already starting to show. To top it off, U.S. cannabis laws keep changing for the better, so one of the final obstacles to legalization in Canada has been removed. Alan Young is a lawyer who's been fighting to reform Canada's marijuana laws for the past 30 years. He says now that four states in the U.S. and counting have legalized pot, change in Canada is inevitable. What is the importance of, of what's happening in the United States now? What impact do you think that will Critical. have on Canada? Look, the United States has always been a you know, foreign policy bully. They go around telling countries what to do, and one of the things they would do is say, don't drop the drug prohibition. Now that the United States has changed, and the major opposition to other jurisdictions changing their policy has been removed, there's not going to be trade sanctions, there's not going to be reprimands, it's the beginning of the end. Given the fact that there is still this political resistance, why are you bullish in saying that I think in five years it will be legalized? Money makes the world go round. That's what's fueling the change in the United States. It's all about tax dollars and law enforcement dollars. And we have the same economic crunch. Despite this, the federal conservatives remain the biggest barrier to ending cannabis prohibition in Canada. We're strongly opposed to the legalization of drugs. It will not happen under our government. Regardless what Prime Minister Stephen Harper and his party may think, they're becoming increasingly isolated in their views about cannabis. For example, in 2014, the chief medical officers of health for BC, Saskatchewan, and Nova Scotia urged the federal government to rethink its cannabis laws, citing legalization as a better alternative to prohibition. BC's Dr. Perry Kendall said, There is clear evidence to demonstrate that the so-called war on drugs has not achieved its stated objectives of reducing rates of drug use or drug availability, and that there are alternative approaches that have proved more effective in protecting public health while not enriching organized crime and driving gang violence. The Canadian Public Health Association agreed in its own policy statement, saying Canada needs a public health approach to managing illegal psychoactive substances that de-emphasizes criminalization and stigma in favor of evidence-based strategies to reduce harm. Then, in October 2014, the Center for Addiction and Mental Health added its support for cannabis legalization. Moreover, recent opinion polls show just how ready Canadians are for cannabis law reform. But when faced with the numbers, even results of a study commissioned by the government, the Conservatives merely see what they want. 70% of Canadians think that the law should be relaxed, 37% support legalization, 33% support decriminalization, 13% say the law should stay the same, and 12% want harsher penalties. Paul Calandra, are, are you worried, um, or, or what do you make of the fact that a majority of Canadians believe that the current marijuana laws are too strict? Well, when I look at the poll, I, I, I see what Canadians are saying. Canadians are saying that a vast majority of Canadians are saying uh, that they are actually opposed to full legalization of marijuana uh, of the type that uh, Mr. Trudeau and the Liberal Party are, uh, are advocating for. I think that's very clear by these polling results. I think if you also ask Canadians, uh, do you want your children to be able to go down the street and buy, buy uh, weed from the corner store, I think almost 100% of them would say, no, that's not what they is, want. Is, so. is, that, is that the Liberal position, that, that um, children will be buying pot at the corner store? Well, the Liberal uh, position is that it would be fully legalized, and, uh, and look, you'll be able to go down the street and, uh, and buy it like you buy your cigarettes. Uh, uh, so uh, we don't agree with that, obviously. That's not something that we're going to be advocating uh, uh, for. We believe that it should uh, uh, remain uh, criminalized. We're working with, obviously, with the, the chiefs uh, of police who also agree 
uh, that it is a wrong approach to decriminalize uh, marijuana. We're going to put the interest of, uh, of, of Canadians first on this. Okay, one. but but you don't see any anything there to, for your government to take away from the fact that 37% uh, support legalization and 33% support decriminalization. I mean, there are some Canadians that see that things need to change. I think you would agree that that's what the poll says. Yeah, but, but what it also says is that uh, some 63% uh, of Canadians are against the Liberal proposal, which would see full legalization of marijuana. Uh, and that's not something that uh, that we're going to do. We're going to fight, obviously, uh, so, so, so you uh, won't to make sure that that never happens. So you won't decriminalize either? Well, we're talking to the Chiefs of Police uh, on this one still, as you know. Uh, the Chiefs of Police have, uh, have told us, uh, our partners in law enforcement have said that they don't agree with decriminalizing uh, uh, marijuana. They think it, uh, uh, that that's a wrong approach. Uh, but we are talking with them about some other approaches uh, and we'll move forward. But what is very, very clear when it comes to our government, we do not agree with Mr. Trudeau that you should ha have easy access to uh, marijuana. Okay. They're trying to set this up as a Liberals versus Conservatives. Yes, but I see we, that as well, yes. But, but, that, but that's, not, that's not what's going on here. I mean, what's very clear in this poll is that uh, Canadians believe that the government's approach is wrong, that this Bush-style war on drugs is not working. We've been saying that for a long time. Uh, and uh, and, the, and the, this government persists in that. Canadians now are recognizing that this is wrong. So the real takeaway from this uh, poll is that Canadians are now on side with what we've been saying, mm -hmm. it's been very clear about for many, many years, that no one should go to jail or end up with a criminal record for uh, personal use of marijuana. That's the position that we've had. And whether you put labels on it or not is a different matter. That's the, that's the key takeaway here, and we want to see that happen. The fact of the matter is the current regime, as it has existed for many years, simply does not work. The statistics show that young people in Canada uh, have, the, uh, have the highest use of marijuana in the developed world. Uh, obviously, that's an unacceptable situation. Uh, Mr. Trudeau's objective uh, is to, in fact, keep marijuana out of the hands of, uh, of young people. Uh, and he has proposed a system of regulation and taxation uh, and taking the incentive away from the gangs that presently run the system uh, that would uh, uh, run the, uh, the, the distinct uh, uh, objective of, uh, of uh, reducing the use, not increasing the use. Uh, and the, the evidence so far uh, in jurisdictions uh, that have followed this approach, including the state of California, show that the crime rate is coming down uh, and that uh, actually the tax, tax revenue yeah. is going up. When asked whether just Justice Minister Peter McKay would listen to doctors, health organizations, and the will of Canadians. He repeated that the Conservatives do not intend to legalize or decriminalize cannabis. In fact, he said they continue to look for ways to increase enforcement, including the ticketing option brought forward by police. He said this would not decrease but increase enforcement and optionality for police to ensure that people are respecting the law. The option to give a ticket gives a police officer an additional tool to deal with inappropriate and illegal behavior, but still the officer would retain the option to lay a criminal charge. Police want the option to be able to ticket uh, pot users who are found to be using 30 grams of pot or less. Right now they only have two, uh, two things in their arsenal. They can either give them a warning, i.e. nothing, or they can charge them. And of course if they're charged, then that pot user would go through the criminal justice system and they could get a record. So the police chiefs have decided that this would be a good option because it, it wouldn't be the all or nothing kind of idea. They would have a bit of a middle ground with this ticket and they say that this would be a more fair approach and they say that it is not a move towards decriminalization but instead a way to empower officers and give them another tool. Former Winnipeg police officer that I was speaking to earlier today had this to say. They're made, turning it into a common offense, a common offense notice, and if it's going to be a common offense notice, they might as well end prohibition altogether. The proposed ticketing scheme is especially problematic because it gives police a level of discretion they don't get with any other offense. Derek Corrigan, a former defense attorney and now mayor of Burnaby, B.C., said in criminal law, we used to call it the I didn't respect the officer enough offense. If you apologized enough, you were unlikely to be charged. I found that to be reprehensible. 
Not only did the Conservatives ignore experts and regular Canadians, but they continuously attacked the one party speaking publicly about true cannabis law reform. Let me show people some of the, the sort of material that the Conservatives are sending around about uh, your sure. leader and, and your policy, just to give them an example, and it very much reflects what Mr. Calandra just said. This, this uh, flyer here was distributed by uh, Julian Fantino's writing, and it reads, Liberal policy to legalize, normalize, and sell drugs in corner stores sends the wrong message to children. The Conservatives aren't prepared to have uh, a rational, logical discussion uh, about how best to deal with this important social issue. So they try to demonize the players in the piece. They, they, it's, it's a campaign of smear and innuendo yeah. to change the subject. The fact of the matter is the current regime has failed. How do we fix it? A system of taxation and regulation so, is likely to be yeah. a better result. What they want to do is they want to increase the availability of marijuana. And they're suggesting that by no. increasing the availability of marijuana, by making it, uh, by taxing it and making it available in more places, that's actually going to reduce the use of it. Uh, that's just absolute nonsense. Uh, that's just sheer stupidity. The fact uh, the of the reality matter is it's more available on the here. street today Nobody than cigarettes and alcohol. The re well, it, it, so that what you're saying is then like okay, cigarettes. Okay, okay, okay. Pa pa Paul Calandra, so respond to that. Logically then, Ralph, then what you're saying is, like cigarettes, you'll be able to go to the same place you buy cigarettes and milk, a bag of chips, bread, and buy oh, don't be marijuana. Silly. We don't think that that's appropriate. We don't think that's appropriate. Our law enforcement partners don't think it's appropriate. And that's why we think that this policy, the liberal policy, it's their only policy. 70% of Canadians on the basis of the government's own market research, 70% of Canadians say the present system is a failure, it doesn't work, and it needs to be changed. It's part of the problem here that the Liberals haven't sort of defined Correct. what yeah. how it would work, Correct. so it well, allows yeah, the Conservatives absolutely. to say, yeah, you're selling absolutely. it in the corner. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, Mr. Trudeau came out and talked about legalization. I think he took his party a bit by surprise and certainly took the public and the media by by surprise that's you know fair game he's now trying to set the debate but uh, in the absence in the vacuum that he, uh, of the policy yeah. you know apparatus or plumbing behind that yeah. in terms of what yeah. this means there are real legal issues the real uh, you know societal issues and, and, and other kinds of things that they have to work through showcasing their commitment to disinformation and fear the conservative government spent more than seven million dollars of taxpayer money on a 10-week anti-weed ad campaign that ended in February 2015 the TV and internet ads by Health Canada ran alongside a partisan ad campaign paid for by the Conservative Party that criticized Liberal leader Justin Trudeau for promising to legalize cannabis. Back in the 80s under Pierre Trudeau, government ads were more often about boosting tourism or explaining new regulations. And selling the government itself was controversial. The government can spend its money on propaganda advertising. The whole purpose of an advertising campaign is to obscure the issue. When the federal government can't earn good publicity, it uses tax dollars to buy good publicity. The Harper government takes the practice to a whole other level. Beyond the ads celebrating Canada's 150th birthday, two years before it happens. A message from the government of Canada. It's promoted its economic action plan for years. And this year launched an anti-pot campaign. Smoking marijuana, it can damage a teen for life. It costs more than Health Canada's entire ad budget for the previous year and just happens to reinforce certain attack ads. Imagine selling marijuana just like cigarettes and alcohol. Justin Trudeau, he's in way over his head. It blurs the line between, you know, a pr promoting actual government services or programs and promoting a partisan agenda, which is what I think they're doing at the end of the day. When you're having attacks um, on Justin Trudeau focusing on marijuana and then you have Health Canada running ads, which are ridiculous, by the way, in terms of the information they're putting out that are very anti-marijuana, that line is absolutely gone. And I would say they're blending into one. You had the Royal College of Physicians and Surgeons and the Canadian Medical Association come out and say, we're distancing ourselves from these Health Canada ads because we, th we think that they're being used in political football. While the ad is clearly biased and meant to scare its viewers, it's also devoid of actual science. For example, the alleged decrease in IQ from using cannabis is found in one single study. What isn't mentioned is the fact that the decrease was only found in kids who smoke cannabis heavily while adults showed no IQ drop. Nor is it mentioned there is another equally valid study refuting the claim altogether. 
Furthermore, there is no scientific consensus on this issue. Health Canada and the Conservatives should be able to understand that one refuted study isn't enough for a $7 million propaganda campaign. And who were we looking at in that vintage parliament, uh, those clips? They were Conservatives. Stephen Harper, when he was an advocate for smaller government and proper spending, mm -hmm. called for an end to the kind of uh, liberal advertising that was going on. And now this government actually spends more than the Liberals did when they left office. Right. So I think 2002 Harper would be pissed off at 2015 Harper is what you're saying. <laughs> A lot of things. Yeah. In the same yeah. room, that would be very interesting. <laughs> Not every Canadian Conservative supports Harper's position, however. According to former Manitoba MP Inky Mark, real Conservatives support legal marijuana. He recently created a group called Canadian Conservatives for Legal Marijuana because Stephen Harper's personal crusade against marijuana users is just another expensive, big government intervention, wasting tax dollars and treating Canadians like children. The ex-Manitoba reformed Conservative MP also claims that many prominent Prominent conservatives are withholding their support for cannabis legalization because they don't want to get in trouble for defying Harper. The group's website includes legalization endorsements from conservative MPs Scott Reed, Patrick Brown, and Gerald Keddy. Not only are some members of Harper's own party defying him, the federal courts continue to defend the rights of Canadians to use and grow cannabis for medical use. In March 2015, the Supreme Court of Canada heard arguments for legalizing cannabis extracts like oil for medical use. Also, in the Conservatives' latest attempt to prevent medical cannabis users from growing at home, the Federal Court of Appeal upheld an injunction exempting patients from the change. This means patients who are already growing cannabis with a license can continue to do so legally. The problem first arose when new rules shifted cannabis production to commercial businesses and prohibited home growing, which is a much cheaper option. While homegrown cannabis should be legal, especially for patients with limited income, the new cannabis companies are proving to be a boon for small Canadian towns with high unemployment. And their success is only a glimpse into the benefits full-blown legalization could have on the Canadian economy. Now small town Canada is scrambling to get a piece of the pot pie. Towns like Smith Falls, Ontario, the town council didn't worry one bit when they were approached by a grow-up called Tweed that wanted to set up shop in town. No, it, it wasn't, wasn't a consideration at all. And Former Mayor I, I Dennis Staple that. says it was an offer the town wouldn't or couldn't refuse. No, no, no. I mean, at that point, Smith Falls had lost six of our major employers, a total of 1,700 jobs in a community of 9,000. I, I did not want to be the mayor that stood up to our public and said, oh, in addition to losing 1,700 jobs, I've just turned on 100 jobs today. I, I came to the conclusion, or our council came to the conclusion, uh, these applications are going to be considered for locations throughout Canada, so why not Smith Falls? And why not the former Hershey Chocolate Factory, which was shuttered in 2008 and slated for demolition until Tweed came along? Tweed was the first publicly traded marijuana company in Canada. Investors quickly turned the startup into a business worth about $100 million. It sells marijuana in pill bottles, featuring sophisticated brand names like Herringbone, Argyle, and Baker Street. Tweed indeed. From the outside, 60,000 square feet of space in an Nanaimo industrial park doesn't draw much attention. But the research and production going on inside is now the city's newest booming industry. We've been shipping products since April of last year to patients across Canada. Tilray is open for business. In that time, the company has become a national leader in medical cannabis production and distribution. A report released today shows between the construction and operation phases, the initial investment of nearly $27 million generated a total of $48 million in economic output in BC, including more than $3 million in direct wages and salaries, the equivalent of 357 full-time jobs, nearly all locally sourced. 95% of the employees that work at Tilray and 95% of the work that was provided in the construction phases was all local to Nanaimo. That's huge. But the success is also largely due to the city's willingness to cooperate. And the fact is that money goes where it's welcome. While some municipalities want nothing to do with marijuana growers and dispensaries, Nanaimo was working to attract them. On top of the region's cost of doing business, renewable power and access to skilled labor, officials took steps to change zoning bylaws in order to capture these sorts of operations. 
companies like Tilray, they have investors in town almost on a weekly basis, and so it's really showcasing Nanaimo as a great place to do business, as well as an incredible quality of life. We made a direct investment in Canada. We've invested $20 million in this facility. It's located in, in beautiful Nanaimo, British Columbia, and we've created 100 Canadian jobs, and we're really interested in creating more jobs in Canada. We've got 16 rooms here, uh, four upstairs, four downstairs, four upstairs, and four downstairs that will uh, be approved and we'll start... Kennedy is dance. bullish about the Canadian marijuana market. His Tilray facility is waiting for Health Canada approval to expand. More growing rooms, more plants, more patients. About 40,000 Canadians had authorization to use and grow medical cannabis under the old system. Because of the federal court injunction, Health Canada doesn't know how many patients continue to grow the plant. About 14,000 patients have registered with the new licensed producers so far, but that number is expected to grow to nearly 500,000 in the coming years. But pot's not just appealing to small towns, but also to big names. Startups have attracted names like former Prime Minister John Turner, former BC Premier Mike Harcourt, and former Ontario Health Minister George Smitherman. Liberal Senator Larry Campbell is an advisor to one company. So is former police chief and current BC MLA Cash Heed. They're all part of the green rush. That's Canada's modern day gold rush. In the past year, tens of millions of dollars have been poured into building new big box grow ups right across the country. And remember, this is just to grow medical marijuana. Imagine how big the bud boom would be if Canada and other countries were to legalize recreational marijuana. Due to the federal government's harsh stance on cannabis, it has been reluctant and strict in its implementation of the new medical cannabis market. About 1,200 potential cannabis producers were enticed with the promise of a $1.3 billion industry, but the government has only licensed two new companies to sell the plant in a year. One company even thinks the government is intentionally trying to stop medical cannabis growers from getting licensed, according to a court affidavit. So far, Health Canada has licensed 23 producers, much less than the 60 projected to be operating at this time. To further complicate the new industry, Health Canada ordered medical cannabis growers to stop advertising their products with treatment claims and promotional images. Health Canada says producers should provide limited information to patients, including the brand name, common name of the strain, price per gram, cannabinoid content, and the company's contact details. They warned that failure to comply could lead to suspension or withdrawal of the company's commercial license. According to Health Minister Rona Ambrose, the Conservative government will continue to discourage Canadians from smoking marijuana at every step. And if she had her way, there'd be no more grow ops for medical cannabis. Despite the claims of continued cannabis prohibition in Canada by the Conservatives, cannabis use remains high and there is at least one Canadian city where the plant is already de facto legalized. You can't buy marijuana from a corner store, right? Well, officially, no. Medical marijuana has been legally sold in Canada since the year 2001 under strict government rules. First, you need to get a prescription from a doctor. Then you have to order it online from a licensed producer, and then wait. Your marijuana will be mailed to you. But here's the reality. In Vancouver, marijuana stores or dispensaries are popping up everywhere. Some people say they don't want to wait for mail order marijuana. Others say they don't want the hassle of trying to get a prescription. In recent months, the number of dispensaries in Vancouver has doubled. But you never thought you'd see a guy in a tie selling weed. <laughs> there are now about 60. That's more than the number of Tim Hortons in town. Here you can buy and prep your purchases. Marijuana is sold for smoking, sold for eating, or if you're health conscious, then how about a pot smoothie? Vancouver police have said they'll allow the stores to stay open as long as they don't sell to kids or become a neighborhood nuisance. And business at these dispensaries is booming, especially here at this one, artfully called the BC Pain Society. Owner Chuck Vorabioff has something none of his competitors have. Canada's first marijuana vending machine. The machine pumps out bags of weed, ranging from six bucks a gram to a half ounce for $80. So Chuck, what I want to know is how many times a day do you have to do this? Oh, four or five or six. 
I, I could use somebody full-time filling and maintaining it. Chuck already had a vending machine business, but after helping a friend dying of cancer get marijuana to treat his pain, he saw a need. And when the police announced they wouldn't bust dispensaries, he saw a business opportunity and a great one. How much revenue is this thing generating? Let's put it this way. It's um, six figures since we've been open, but that further than that, I'm not positive. But you're talking about hundreds of thousands of dollars. Yes. From this machine. Yes. In a matter of months. Yes. It's a members only machine. Patients need to be 18 or over and consult with a nurse or a notary to prove they have a medical need. Okay, and if you guys want, we have more gumballs going in right now. What's in here is one gram of high quality marijuana for $4. Chuck, you've got a great business set up here, I can see that, but I don't want to spoil the party. It's illegal. Yes, according to the Criminal Code of Canada. Well, that's, that's, what, that's the law. Yeah, well, yes, we live in Vancouver. Vancouver City Police and the City Hall has allowed us to regulate our own business. Uh, Vancouver City Police have made it clear um, that this is not a priority to them. They came in, they looked around, uh, they gave us some safety pointers how to keep our staff and our customers safe, and they left happy. And his booming illegal business is the city's worst kept secret. He put up this big banner to take advantage of the commuter trains that pass by every two minutes. Everyone looking out this sky train window, guess what? They see our big sign there and our uh, four by 10 foot sign right there. There's no hiding what you're doing here. They're absolutely not, no, no. And we're, we're not doing anything to hide. Things. Chuck wants to force the issue by challenging Ottawa. Either shut me down or tax me like any other business. They need to get down here or they need to invite us over there to sit down with them and work out a program that works. Teo Suleiman is part owner of the Sea to Sky Dispensary. He's a new generation potrepreneur pushing the boundaries of the law. But all of these are illegal. All of these right now are illegal and all of these right here serve a purpose and that's the only reason why they're here. Until he got into the medical marijuana business, Mateo ran a pizzeria and enjoyed getting high in his spare time. Cannabis is... Now he sees himself as a pot pioneer, poised to cash in on what he and his partner Max Jahanger see as the business opportunity of a lifetime. Such a new market, it's like, it's like uh, how Canada was 100 years ago. Just everything starting off, this is the same way, starting off and we want to have our foot in the door before the door closes basically, you know what I mean? Their storefront is all window and the store itself is located not far from the local police station. We opened up all our windows where people can see inside, know that we have nothing to hide and that we're doing something good for the community. If the police and the public can live with a place like this, why can't the federal government? <coughs> Very powerful. Jeez. That's what these guys want to know. This to me looks like it's been legalized already. That's what our goal is here is we want to legalize. We want everybody to have access to cannabis. Cannabis is a good thing. And what we will do, me and Max together, to try to help out this whole process is that we're going to expand and we're going to expand into all of Canada. As of right now, like we do service to all of Canada. So it's Vancouver today and And it's Nova tomorrow. Scotia tomorrow. Yeah. With the Conservatives so adamant that legalization will never occur while they're in power, the only hope for real change is with the federal Liberals led by Justin Trudeau. Thankfully, the election in October 2015 will allow Canadians to oust the federal Conservative Party and end cannabis prohibition. Victory isn't assured, however, so this is an especially important time for Canadians to push the issue of legalization and ensure the Harper Conservatives aren't re-elected. While the NDP support decriminalization, their cannabis policy is a band-aid solution that keeps the black market intact. Justin Trudeau and the Liberal Party are the only ones speaking honestly about cannabis while supporting legalization, taxation and regulation, which would not only keep innocent Canadians out of jail and kids off weed, it would create jobs and provide funds for education, healthcare 
research, and law enforcement. Canada right now has the number one rate of teen underage use of marijuana in the world. Wow. Of 29 developed countries, I didn't know that. Uh, it's easier for kids to buy a joint uh, than, than it is to buy a beer sure. or even a cigarette. Yeah. Okay? So our current system isn't working. We want to keep it out of the hands of our kids mm -hmm. while respecting adults' rights to make their choices. And that means uh, if we control and regulate it the way one controls and regulates alcohol, for example, uh, it actually becomes more difficult for underage people to get it. Sure. And most importantly, it keeps the millions upon millions of dollars that right now is being funneled into criminal organizations and gangs mm -hmm. uh, you know, back into public coffers uh, where we get to invest in treatment, in research, in, uh, you know, understanding exactly what uh, how best to manage sure. this particular product you have to find the right level because if you overtax well then the black market comes in anyway uh, but sure. finding something that actually works and you know there's lots of models around the world sure. Colorado's one yeah. that uh, uh, that we can look at and when I first announced the policy I you know every every interview I had there'd be a question so you're gonna legalize pot it was the big you know and I used to roll my eyes and say oh I gotta talk about this again I really want to talk about our plan for the economy but okay I'll talk about this but then I realized that talking about this actually becomes a proof point for evidence-based policy for not being stuck on ideology of reefer madness of I mean the attack ads that the conservative government is putting out against me personally saying I want to you know make it easier for kids to get pot is a blatant misrepresentation and sure. it's the kind of scare tactics that are actually bouncing back on them because people are saying wow these guys are really out to lunch and they don't understand a solid piece of public policy.